Hello friends, have you been struggling to get your Quest 2's Air Link performing well on games like Beat Saber and others, going so far as to buy a pricey Wi-Fi 6 router? If so, stick around, I may have a solution for you. So when I first got my Quest 2, the first piece of advice I received was to go out and buy myself a Wi-Fi 6 router. At the time I had the previous gen's router and while that tended to work mostly well for most games like Half-Life Alex and Lone Echo etc, with Beat Saber it tended to struggle and I was told the Wi-Fi 6 router was actually the way to go. So promptly went out and bought one for about $70, $80 or so on Amazon and then spent the next I don't know how many months playing around with settings, googling how to's trying to figure out how to get that Wi-Fi 6 router to perform well with my Quest Air Link. And specifically with Beat Saber, as Beat Saber is a more intensive game, if you will, when it comes to latency, like if there's latency issues or whatever, lag, you definitely feel it in Beat Saber. So it's a great game to test that kind of thing out in. And ultimately, I won't say I failed, but <laughs> I switched back to the Link cable for Beat Saber and only use the Air Link for games like Half-Life Alex. So when I heard about this VR Air Bridge coming out, got a little more hopeful. And so here we got it, the VR Air Bridge. So let's take a look at it, shall we? In the box, we get the instruction manual, but we don't need those because who reads instructions around here, right? And then of course we have the actual VR Air Bridge, the dongle, USB dongle here. In the in the box it has a cap. Pop that cap off and it's your standard USB port. We also have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 cradle and that cable is about, I don't know, three, four feet or so. And the cradle is where the dongle goes into, like so. And the instructions say that the dongle should be upright. It should be line of sight of your Quest. Not too far away, same room and all that jazz, you know, like the same with the routers. And then um, they say put this about desk height. I personally have this thing on my television, the top of the television, which is about yay height to me. So you, you f play around with whatever in your place and uh, work, do what works best for you. So that's the dongle, the VR Air Bridge. And let me run you through a quick installation process. It's actually really quite simple. So let's get into that. All right, step one, you wanna plug this uh, cradle into the back of your PC. Meta says to plug it into a 3.0 USB slot, which typically are blue. I would say on the back of your PC, look for the little USB port that has the SS with the Triton looking symbol on it. That's the super speed port. You wanna plug it into that one. And then you will position your cradle with the air bridge plugged into it in a manner that works best for your specific purposes. Like I said, mine is positioned on top of my TV, although right here I'm showing it on top of my PC, but normally it's on top of the TV is where I put it. But whatever works best for you, place it in the manner that works best for you. The moment you've plugged your air bridge into your PC, you will get this little message pop up that says, make sure your headset is on and nearby since you will need to put it on to finish the setup. That is correct. Make sure it's on your bike because you will need it. And then once that's done, hit continue. From there, you will be prompted to create a password. Make sure you write the password down because you will need it to input it in the headset. And if you don't write it down and you do a complicated one, you might forget it. So write it down. <laughs> once you've entered a password that meets their standards and you get all the green little check marks there, you will hit continue. And the PC will say preparing to connect. Once it's done, it will say connect your headset. Put on your headset and connect to VR Air Bridge in your Wi-Fi settings using the password you created, which means you made sure you wrote it down, right? So once your headset is on, you will click on your Wi-Fi connections. This thing will not let me show you mine, but you will click on your Wi-Fi connections and find the one that says VR Air Bridge. Click on that, type in your password, hit connect. Once it's connected, it will say no internet, but that's fine because that's how the way this thing works. It's not an actual router. It doesn't give you an internet connection with your headset. It connects directly to your PC. So that's fine. As long as it's connected, you're good to go. 
All right, you are connected to the VR Air Bridge and you can see it there under the Wi-Fi it says VR Air Bridge. So you go over and you click on the Quest link and then you will see the VR Air Bridge there. You will wanna pair it up. So click pair and voila, we are connected. So now you can launch your Quest Air Link at your leisure and you're good to go. Just remember that whenever you shut off your headset and you come back into it at a future time, you will need to go back into your Wi-Fi settings and reconnect to the VR Air Bridge. It will remember your password. It just will not remember that it's supposed to say connected. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Go back in, find the VR Air Bridge, click connect, and you're good to go. All right, before we jump into some gaming, I will show you my settings in the Oculus Debug Tool. This is what I use. This may work for you, it may not, but this is what I use. So if it works for you, fantastic. Go ahead and copy it over. All right, second thing you want to do before you are ready to do some gaming is you want to do Control Alt Delete, open up your task manager, and then you want to scroll down your task manager until you can find the one that says OVR Server X64.exe, and you will right click, go to Details, and it should still be highlighted there. So you go down to it again, and go right click, Set priority to high. So basically that is, that's the link cable, that's the air link, that's basically everything between your computer and your uh, Quest headset. So you want that getting all the traffic it needs to perform to its max potential. And there you go, it's as simple as that. And quite frankly, that's one of the strongest reasons to buy the VR AirBridge over like a Wi-Fi 6 router because while Carmack admitted it does say... But the best commercial routers are pretty darn close to this. If you've got a high-end gaming router, it's probably just as good. As someone who struggled and struggled severely to get my Wi-Fi 6 router to work with the AirLink and ultimately failed, there is a level of knowledge with routers and how to tweak the settings in the channels, etc., etc that you don't need to have with this VR air bridge. It's basically just a plug and play. So depending on what your level of knowledge is and how comfortable you are with routers, maybe you just want something you can grab and plug in and play and get right into gaming. And if so, this bridge is probably the thing for you. Anyways, that's that. So now we're going to look into some comparisons between Beat Saber and Half-Life Alex. So let's get to gaming, shall we? Before we jump into some comparisons, I'm going to show you my graphics settings in the Oculus desktop app. I have it set to 90 hertz, and I have that render resolution bar slid all the way to the right. In the headset, we have our AirLink bitrate set to dynamic, and we have that bar slid all the way to 200. Alright, so as we start this song here, the one on the right is the Wi-Fi 6. The one on the left is VR AirBridge. I'm going to discuss this from two perspectives. The subjective, which is what I am seeing and experiencing with the headset on, and the objective and what we see with the charts there. So objectively, looking at those charts, you would say we're not seeing a huge difference in performance between the two. The mo ab motion to proton latency is approximately the same. Performance headroom is approximately the same. Looks like the one on the right, the Wi-Fi 6, seems to be dropping less frames than the VR AirBridge on the left. That's objectively. But there's another thing to think about subjectively. What I'm experiencing with the headset on. And what that is, is with the one on the left, the VR AirBridge, it's a much smoother playing experience. I'm literally not feeling any stutter, any lag, any micro stutters, micro latencies, micro lags, nothing like that. The one on the right, the Wi-Fi 6, however, I'm ex experiencing a significant amount of micro stutters, micro lags, little latency issues going on. It's not being shown on the recording and I'm not sure why that is but it's happening and I'm feeling it with the headset on. And you see that reflective in my score. The one on the right, the Wi-Fi 6, I have a lower score than I do on the left, the VR Air Bridge. And I'm starting to come back from that moment early in the song where I actually took a big plummet, but it's still less than the one on the right. All right, so now we have Half-Life Alex, and I did something interesting here. So beyond the settings on the desktop app that I have, and beyond the bitrate in the headset set to 200 dynamic, in the game settings, I have them set to ultra. 
because I really wanted to push this game and the performance and see what I could do. Mind you, my C GPU is a 2070 Super, my CPU is a 5800X, and I have 32 gigs of RAM set at 3200. And I just wanted to see how far I could push it. Objectively, looking at those graphs, both of these are really struggling to push this thing out. The frame rates are really up there being dropped. The performance headroom is like really struggling and <laughs> the app motion to photon latency is definitely not ideal. Now interesting thing to note, the Wi-Fi 6 seems to be having a harder time here, but I think that's more due to the scene that it's going through. Whenever you have these dialogue scenes in game, it really struggles to put it out. Whereas the non-dialogue scenes, it's a little bit easier. That being said, that's objectively looking at the graphs. Subjectively, it's the same as with Beat Saber. With the headset on, actually playing it, feeling the game, experiencing the game, the VR air bridge, while it's struggling clearly with the graph to play the game at these settings, the performance in the game is much smoother. It's butter smooth. I don't notice that it's struggling. It feels good. Whereas the Wi-Fi 6, I notice that it's struggling. There's those micro stutters, micro lags, micro latency things that's going on. I can feel the struggle happening with the Wi-Fi 6. I cannot feel the struggle with the VR air bridge. So that's my take on that. Now, realistically, I probably should be dialing back the in-game settings to medium, and then they both perform relatively well. But I just wanted to do it this way to prove a point. The VR air bridge, while objectively it's shown that they perform moderately the same, there's a subjective factor to not forget that in the game, what you feel and what you're experiencing probably is not going to align exactly with those graphs. So understandably, this little device is $100, and one could buy a Wi-Fi 6 router for $100. But like I said before, it's a matter of uh, pros and cons with the router. Got to have the knowledge to set it up properly, choose the right channels, yada, yada, yada. If you're somebody like me, maybe you don't possess that knowledge. You just want something to plug it in, get to going with your Quest 2 and your Beat Saber, and you don't want to hassle around with a lot of things. It's really hard to beat this VR air bridge. Uh, the performance is great. In fact, my opinion, it's a little better than the Wi-Fi 6 router. You get right into gaming, be good to go. So that's my take. If you found anything valuable what I said today, subscribe like the video and don't forget to click that little bell to receive notifications when my next videos go live.